if they don't have bread, let them eat brioche. I will not stand by this word because last time someone said that they got a head chopped up. Anyway, today we are going to make a variation of brioche called Gache Vendéenne. It's very specific of my little region of France, so pretty happy to do it. It's something that reminds me of my childhood memories because my brother and I used to eat that for breakfast or around four o'clock after school. So great memories and it's very delicious with a little hint of orange. Two things were meant to be done for us to get cooking and for you to subscribe. Let's go. So first we're going to start with a small saucepan and we're going to place our milk into the pan and we're going to warm it up. I think I've told you before, but I'm just going to say it again. Make sure it's not too, too hot so you don't kill the yeast. Once you have the warm milk, we're going to pour it into a ramekin and then we're going to add the yeast to the warm milk. We're also going to add about a tablespoon of the sugar of the total amount. So don't get any extra. And then we're going to give that a stir and we're going to let it develop for about 10 minutes. While this is happening, I'm going to start adding the flour into my mixer. You could also do the dough by hand, but as you know by now, I'm a little bit lazy. So then once I've added my flour, I'm going to add my salt as well as my sour cream or creme fraiche. We're going to crack our eggs, couples, and then we're going to add our mixture that is now fully developed into our mixer. I will then close the mixer and I'm using the hook attachment and we're gonna start mixing it. What we wanna do at this point is to make sure everything is combined between one another. When it is, I'm going to add the sugar and then we're gonna mix that together and I'm also gonna add the butter. Um, I'm gonna add it little by little, little bits and you need to make sure in this recipe that every ingredient is at room temperature. It's very important from the eggs to the butter, well, to the flour, but I mean, that you already know. And then when we have incorporated all the butter, we're going to let it go and the dough is going to start to kind of like get out of the mixer. And at this point, I'm going to stop it and I'm going to add the next two ingredients. The first one being my vanilla paste. And then I will move on to the orange, which is really the main flavor in uh, the gash. You could also use some orange liqueur. It's really up to you. I will then close the mixer once again and I'm going to let it go at this point and all I want is for the dough to be fully incorporated, everything mixed together, it should be quite smooth and you could go all the way until maybe 5-10 minutes until all the dough is fully incorporated and, and very um, uh, smooth but you know me by now, you know I like to finish my dough by hand because once again I like to control it and I like to fill the dough to make sure I'm really happy with it. A little magic as always and then i'm gonna knead the dough until i'm really happy with it that i like the elasticity the resistance to the dough and um, it's pretty smooth once again you could absolutely finish that in the mixer it's really up to you when i'm happy i'm gonna pat it then i will place it back into a bowl make sure it's very comfy in its bowl we're gonna add some plastic wrap to cover and then i'm gonna let it proof for five hours i know it's quite some time. Five hours later. All right, um, almost half a day has gone by. I mean, not really, but it feels like it. Anyway, my dough has proofed and doubled in size. So I'm now going to take it out of the bowl and we're gonna start dividing it up into three equal portion of about 330 grams if you follow the recipe properly. If you haven't, well, just make sure it's the same size. Once I'm happy with my three little bowl um, that are actually not, bowl right now so I want to turn them into a perfect little round shaped baby bowl so I'm gonna do that before we actually move on to the next step which is going to be giving it the gash which is pretty much the same as what we call a batar so I'm going to fold the dough over itself and then wrap it around and then almost giving like an oblong shape okay it doesn't have to be perfect because batar means bastard so as you can tell, it's not gonna be precise. Then I'm gonna wrap it up and I'm gonna proof it for another two hours. I know, two hours later. Okay, so our gash are again proof for the second time. So what I'm gonna be doing next is to give them a little tan, you know, just like that beautiful. And we're gonna use some egg wash and I'm gonna make sure the egg wash is everywhere so we have a nice crust and an even color. I will then bake them in the oven at 350 for 45 minutes. 
45 minutes later. And after a long day of waiting, we finally have some gash. So I'm gonna tap the bottom to make sure they're cooked. If it sounds empty, then you wanna put them back because they're not fully cooked. I will let him cool down. As you can see, I'm burning my hands. So I'm gonna let him cool down for about 30 minutes at least. Then I will take one. This one looks pretty. Then I will slice it up and I can tell you it's still a little warm inside. So it's better and it looks better when it's fully, you know, room temperature and not super, super hot, but they are pretty, pretty good. Like a brioche is pretty airy. The gash is actually pretty tight. It's quite the opposite. So right now I'm gonna cut another slice and you know what time it is. We are going to try it. And here we have it. It smells incredible. This orange flavor are really potent in a very good way. It's an easy recipe, but you have to be patient. But trust me, when you see this, it's so worth it. You can eat it as is, or you could add some jam or some hazelnut paste, sugar, honey, whichever way you want. I'm going to try this. So if you enjoyed this recipe, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you on the next episode. Hmm.